What's up, you guys? Welcome back into iHeartRadio's official wrestling podcast, the Battleground Podcast. And it is an exciting week here on the show. Uh, it's Mania Week. Everything is going down in Philadelphia. And one of the big events, one of the most talked about events, is GCW's Josh Barnett's Bloodsport X. And uh, it's happening Thursday night. Of course, uh, you can't buy tickets. It's sold out. So good luck trying to get those. Uh, so you're just going to have to watch it on pay-per-view. On the show right now, joining us, Royce Isaacs. Man, how you doing, sir? I'm I'm good, man. Uh, as a disclaimer, if you're watching the video, I don't generally just wear uh, rash guards around the house. I literally just got done grappling, rushed home uh, so I could uh, be here in time for the interview and everything like that. So training's going well, man. I'm feeling good. Uh, I've been working really, really hard, basically doing a, like a, a fight camp at Hyaston MMA. So I'm, you know, I, I feel like at the end of any fight camp, you're a little bit beat up, but like in a good way, like my body's conditioned. I'm ready to go. I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Absolutely. And of course, uh, Thursday night, that is when Josh Barnett's Bloodsport X is happening. And what's, uh, what's the excitement level heading into the busiest week in pro wrestling this week? For me, the excitement is at an all-time high. Um, so Minoru Suzuki at Bloodsport is about as marquee of a match as you can ask for, for a Mania Week type of deal. Mm. Um, and especially on such a big card where you have actual WWE talent, like current WWE talent on the card. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of eyes. The world's going to be watching. So I'm ready, man. I've been, like, as soon as uh, I got word that that was what the matchup was, you know, I was already working hard. I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like people who know me know that, but I ramped it up twofold at that moment. Yeah. And uh, I'm really, I'm, I want to show people the best Royce Isaacs that I possibly can. So my thing is, uh, you know, I, I think um, Matt Sarah said the harder I work, the luckier I get. So that's my whole mindset. That's my whole goal here is I've just been working my butt off. And uh, I think that'll manifest in the ring. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Bloodsport has kind of carved out a niche as one of the most unique and must-see events in professional wrestling. Uh, what do you think is the appeal of this event to you as a performer, and why do you think fans have taken to this event? You know, I think for some people, you know, like, don't get me wrong, like, I guess if you looked at, like, what the most popular – beer or something it would probably be like bud light or some you know i don't know coors light or something that's just like a very easily digestible you can buy it in a 30 rack and whatever but to me blood sport is like a like a really fine craft beer that you have to really appreciate and get all the tastes and scents and let it kind of swirl around um to me that's what blood sport is, is if you really love grappling and you really love you know, MMA or you loved Pancrase back in the day or UWFI and stuff that like you can watch it as a newbie to wrestling and enjoy it. I certainly think that, but I think if you really appreciate the art of grappling, the art of fighting, um, I think blood sport is for you. And, um, I, I wish, uh, I wish there was blood sport events every weekend, but at the same time, when there's only that one a year, it really makes it special. It really makes people go, wow, like this is an event. And Josh always has some aces up his sleeve. He always has some crazy announcements. He always has some really cool stuff in the works. So I don't know. It's to me, you know, I know there are, there are places that do uh, similar styles. I don't think anyone, you know, can really hold a candle to blood sport. There's a reason why it's like the pinnacle of what it is. Right. For sure. And, you know, you look at everything that, that Josh has done because we recently had him on the show and like him shocking the world and bringing in, you know, Shayna Baszler from WWE, which, you know, beforehand that was ever that was never heard of, of having a WWE talent coming to, uh, quote unquote, an indie show. And now you look at it and it's every wrestling promotion is a part of Bloodsport. Yeah, no, that's that's huge. It's it's like bringing everyone together and stuff. And, you know, I I think if you look at that card, it's a crazy good card. Like, I know personally for me, I'm really excited to see uh, Speedball and Nick Namath uh, throw down. I think that's going to be a really interesting styles clash. But, I mean, there's a little bit of something for everyone. As long as you enjoy the style, you're going to – I think it. it's always – every blood sport, I'm like, wow, this is such a – like, when I'm watching it backstage, I'm like, this is such 
a crazy good card top to bottom. And then every single time Josh finds a way to top it. It's very impressive. Right, for sure. And, you know, one of the matches other than uh, the, the Shana match that everybody's talking about is, you know, you, you've had some tough opponents in your previous six blood sport appearances, but this weekend might be your toughest as you're taking on Minoru Suzuki. How do you prepare for a match with this legend, much less a blood sport match? You know, um, it, it, I do. I, I, to me, I, I shine brightest when the lights are, you know, brightest. <laughs> wow, that was a, how, what, what words to me? I shine my best when the lights are brightest. How about that? Um, to me, I love the challenge of it. I love that there was a big, big gauntlet thrown down when Josh said, hey, what do you think about this matchup? It was like, yeah, I would love that. Um, to me, like I said, I've been running a basically just a fight camp. Like I was having a UFC fight. Uh at, at highest on and grappling with Josh. And um, I think that's kind of just how you have to run it and you have to push yourself mentally. Like, I don't know if you ever, if you've ever trained in something like a, you know, folk style wrestling or freestyle wrestling, or if you ever, if you have shoot fighting experience and whatnot, you kind of have to go to these training sessions where you go to a dark place and you just keep pushing through it. You find ways to mentally continue to push yourself because the last thing I want to do is get out there and my problem is my conditioning or I'm, you know, I'm gassed out or I'm not, I don't know enough techniques and whatnot. So it's just been learning as much, uh, you know, learning as much technique that I don't know, drilling the techniques I already do know, pushing my conditioning past its uh, peak form. I've been trying to really stay on. I've had to take, you know, I, I obviously lifting weights is a big part of my regimen, uh, but I've probably taken a step back in terms of I've done like one less day a week but gone harder on the four days that I do hit now. I just hit them extremely hard. And then I have a, you know, a bunch of days that I'm, I'm grappling a bunch of days that I'm uh, in a ring uh, on a mat, all that kind of stuff. So my actual volume of training has gone up a tremendous amount. And to me, that's when you have a challenge ahead of you, like Suzuki, that's showing the due respect to that challenge. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and it's it's definitely going to be one of the most talked about matches at Bloodsport this week. And you know, speaking of you know talked about, buzzed about, uh, one of the most buzzed about teams in all of pro wrestling over the last few years has been you know the West Coast Wrecking Crew. Um, what sets this team apart for other tag teams uh, performing at this high of a level? I mean, I think. It's pretty self-evident if you watch us work. I, you can see the Steiner brothers influence. I don't think anyone is doing it quite like us right now. Um, I don't think anyone has a, a look like us on the indies. I don't think anyone talks like us and promos on the indies. And I don't think anyone can cut it in the ring with us on the indies as far as tag teams go. Uh, I think we've really been setting the standard and, and raising the bar. And it looks like people are slowly kind of starting to realize and recognize, but you know, and then there's also like, uh, you know, I feel like we're still really uh, underrated and underappreciated. Like, I know there are certain spots that really like us and like Deadlock's been messing with us a lot lately and treating us really well, giving us great matches and whatnot. But then, uh, you know, it's like the PWI 100 has their 100 tag teams. The last two years we haven't been on it. And it's like, hey, man, good luck naming, you know, 25 tag teams that are better than us, let alone 100. It's like, Please justify most of those people above. I, I, I just get, I guess I don't really speak on this a lot because I kind of like to let my work speak for itself and my, my resume do its talking. But I do get kind of uh, fed up when we don't get recognized or we don't get our just due. And I think in certain pockets, people really recognize, you know, people who know a uh, good tag team wrestling, I should say, recognize and they go, wow, this is a special team. How come no one has snatched them up? How are they still on the indies? But, uh, you know, there's still plenty of places that uh, I guess are <laughs> blind or something. Right. Well, well, we'll make sure that we, we get the word out and spread the word. Even though everybody knows the West Coast Wrecking Crew, we're going to make sure it's a household name by the end of 2024. And, Appreciate you know, that. We, we've been doing the show for a while, and a lot of our listeners will know you uh, from – your successful run in the NWA holding tag team goal in the wild cards, which was a part of strictly business. How different is the Royce Isaacs that left NWA in 2020 compared to the Royce Isaacs of 2024? I mean, 
I guess I would be interested to hear from like fans and I have a little bit on Twitter and whatnot, uh, their perspective. Cause I think my perspective matters a little less. However, if you, since you're asking, I think that, um, I am a much more serious, like I think NWA, uh, was, there was some really funny, goofy stuff, but I never thought that I got to really play into my strengths fully. Um, and that's fine. I'm not, this isn't me being like, Oh, I'm going to air them out. And I think this was BS or whatever. Like they gave me a great opportunity. It led to more great opportunities. Like, I don't know it without that, would I've still gotten on with uh, new Japan and new Japan strong and whatnot. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and then, you know, they, they took care of me well. So this isn't like sour grapes or whatever, but I do really prefer um, kind of the current iteration of myself where I think I let my, uh, my in ring do the speaking quite a bit. I think I'm allowed to, you know, now that I have more freedom, I'm able to kind of be myself more and find myself in terms of uh, my character and um, you know, the kind of stuff that I'm saying. Uh, I, you know, I, I get it. You're, you know, with the NWA, they're producing a big uh, product that they're trying to, uh, they have a million things going on and whatnot. But I, I think personally to me, my style, both in ring, my style as a human being, all that, I just think resonates more with the new Japan style and more with how I um, present myself currently. So it feels, honestly, it feels a lot more natural. Um, you know, I, I'm not an actor, I'm a wrestler. So <laughs> Um, you know, and I think I'm kind of a little bit in some ways, a, a bit of a throwback wrestler. So if you let me do that and you let me be that and be less, uh, you know, goofy and whatnot, I think it comes across a lot better. And I think that's why the fans have reacted well to that. And I think that's why new Japan has appreciated that is because it's more genuine and, uh, yeah, I just think it reads better. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's fun to watch, you know, growing up watching wrestling and how it's evolved over the years from like as we were kids to now. And the last five years have been some of the biggest years in the history of pro wrestling. Uh, do you have any guesses on what like maybe the next big trend will be in the next five years in pro wrestling? Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a great question because I uh... – I don't know if I have a good answer for that because I don't really follow trends. I, and I'm not trying to be like, Oh, I set trends. I don't follow trends. No, I just kind of am me. Like I, I think I would be wrestling like the, the way I wrestle if it was the eighties. And I think I'd be wrestling the way that I wrestle if it was 2050. I don't really, you know, obviously I pay attention to what's going on. I don't want to be completely out of the loop, but I also don't want to just do what everyone else is doing. I think things are fairly cyclical. So we might see, I guess, it, okay, here, we'll, we will give a prediction. I do think, uh, not that we're going to, like, return to the Attitude Era or something like that, but I do think things may, uh, in general, in mainstream wrestling, especially because there are two companies really going to war, get back to being a little less PG and more, uh, more edgier, which I think we have seen to a degree, but I think that's going to continue along. Uh, I think we're... Hopefully, I would like to see a little more emphasis on uh, in-ring wrestling and being able to tell stories that way as well. Not, I don't just mean like doing one match, one match, one like like a dream match, dream match, dream match style. I just mean like uh, if you look at how like New Japan presents its product, there's not a ton of uh, promos. There's backstage comments and whatnot, and there are promos and video packages, but they do a great job of still telling stories as good as any other wrestling i would say um but they do it with a much higher focus on like by percentage of their show how much is actual wrestling versus like you know a uh, soap opera -y kind of presentation and whatnot and i don't know maybe that's just wishful thinking but uh if we could get a little bit of edginess and a little bit more focus on uh in-ring stuff i think we would have a pretty good formula right for sure and i think you know it's ever going to, it's always going to be evolving. Uh, I mean, you look at, you know, what WWE is doing soon with their deal on Netflix. What's that going to mean for the ratings moving forward? And you kind of see it with every other company, like you said. Now, we, we did talk about this on the show recently that you were coming on. And a lot of people know uh, stuff with you from the past. And a lot of people were very curious when we said, hey, we've got Royce coming on the show. They want to know, some of our listeners want to know, do you still keep in touch with Mae Valentine? 
No, I haven't. I haven't talked to her since probably uh, when I got my release from the company. It's not like a like a personal thing. Uh, we so we tried to play it off like we were like actually dating or whatever, like on Instagram and whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. But like that was obviously that was just like a, a fake girlfriend situation. There was there was nothing there. So she did train under me a little bit um, uh, for a while, but once. Once I wasn't getting uh, NWA paycheck and uh, she wasn't training for in ring, there, like uh, it's 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 nothing. Like I don't have any beef, and I would hope she doesn't have any beef with me. Just like it's not like we were friends or uh, you know anything like that. So we just kind of went our separate ways. But uh, you know, I I think she's still over there if I'm not uh, wrong. And I mean, she's still. Uh, oh, sorry, my dog's got a little reverse sneeze. Um, as long as she's doing okay, um, then cool. I'm happy for her, and uh, I'm I'm doing great. So I, I get, but I get why people ask because like we did, we like legit did. Like my mom was like hitting me up, like, why didn't you tell me you were dating someone? I'm like, no, because I'm not. Cause I'm not. <laughs> um, but but yeah, no, I have not spoken to her. Understandable. I, I, I get that. Um, so, so, you know, before I let you go, cause I know you're a, a very busy man cause you got to train for Suzuki later this week. Uh, final thoughts heading into blood sport. And, uh, is there anything else you're doing this weekend outside of blood sport? Uh, for me, just blood sport this week, uh, which is to me, I'm glad because that's all I wanted to focus on. And, uh, I didn't want to have, like when you have a match like that with someone like Suzuki, I think you want to give them the respect of your full attention. And like, I just had a full weekend last weekend and that was already like, man, should I just, <laughs> should I just be like resting up this weekend and getting ready and whatnot? Um, but I've gotten some physical therapy. Everything is good. I'm ready to go. Um, my thing is just, if you don't, you know, if you believe in me, Hey, cheer, cheer on your boy Royce on Thursday. And if you don't know me or you don't believe in me, open your eyes and watch. I'm not saying, oh, you have to love me or this, that, whatever. But give me a chance and let me let me earn your fandom because I'm bringing every single you will you will not you will not see me win, lose, or draw with a regret Thursday night because I will leave it all in the ring. I'm bringing the best Royce Isaacs humanly possible, and I think people who have been following me, blood sport to blood sport, they've seen amazing performances my words obviously but i would i would think that they would say that and i think that i've continued to raise the bar for what i do every time if you look at my first match uh with calder uh my matches with Coglin, through the match with tito clark and then uh, morrison every match i've done something a little bit bigger and i've improved and i've improved and suzuki is no exception you know the plan is Go to Philly, do my thing, work my butt off, and come out with a W. So that's where I'm at. And and that's the plan that we we plan to see on uh, Thursday night for Josh Barnett's Bloodsport X, or if you want to say Josh Barnett's Bloodsport 10, however you want to put it out there. We all know what it is. We all know where to be on Thursday night. Well, if you don't have a ticket, you're kind of screwed, so you might want to just try to peek in through a window somewhere. Or you can hey, they got the, the stream. You got the stream. You got the stream. You can watch it on uh, Triller TV, also uh, formerly known as Fight TV. Uh, but, Royce, it's an honor. It's a privilege to have you on the show, and I uh, look forward to seeing you on Thursday night, man. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, bye from Gimlet. He's doing better. His reverse knees cleared up. So, hey, thanks so much for, my time, for your time, and uh, check me out.